for this piece, I'm working on the Canson B10s pastel paper, and I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it, but it's not the touch or text version of that paper, which is a completely different sanded kind of paper by Canson. It's just the normal Me10s pastel paper. I'll leave a link in the description to that so that you can make sure that you're getting the right one. But this paper has two sides to it. It has a rough side and a smooth side. And I like to use the smooth side for colored pencil. I'm starting out by choosing a color from the reference photo that is the most obvious to me, which was the blue on the nose area. Then while I've got this color, I'm actually looking to see where else I can add that color before moving on to the next most obvious color to me. When you're working with colored pencil, you want to do very light layers. You don't want to push too hard, especially in the first few layers, because it will create visible strokes and it will be really hard to blend out. It also creates more depth in your artwork if you work in multiple light layers rather than treating it like a coloring in with only one layer of color. In this base layer, I'm just focusing on blocking in the main colors. I'm not too worried about getting it perfect and I'm not adding too many fine details because we will be blending this layer out. I'm also making sure to add my pencil strokes in the general direction of the fur detail as well. You don't want to have vertical strokes in any area that actually has horizontal fur direction because the pencil strokes will show through in the end and it will look quite odd. Don't just go straight to gray or white for the highlights in black areas because it can make the dog look older or like it has gray hairs. Black fur tends to reflect the other colors around it. So you'll probably find colors like blues or purples or reds or something like that in the highlight areas. And that will make it look a lot more natural and more interesting. Even in the darkest areas, I never just use black by itself. I always mix in other colors with it. So some artists say that you should never use black because it can look quite flat and they recommend to mix other colors together to make a dark color like ultramarine blue and burnt umber, for example. And that works really great for acrylics or oils or watercolor. But for some of the dry mediums like colored pencil and pastel, I find that mixing other colors to make black isn't quite dark enough. So I use the black a lot, but I always mix in other colors with it. I like to add a lot of blues and reds and purples and that kind of thing in the black areas. So I'm now coming in with solvent to blend out this layer. Make sure that you're dabbing off the excess solvent onto some paper towel before you come into your artwork. You really don't need a lot of solvent on the brush. Again, make sure that you're following the fur direction with the brush strokes as well, just in case they show through in the end result. I'm also using really cheap brushes to apply it with because they tend to get ruined when you use them with solvent. And these are just generic sort of oil or acrylic painting brushes that are not too soft like a watercolor brush, but they're not too hard like a bristle brush. If you use colored pencil with solvent on papers like pastel mat, you'll really notice that the brushes get damaged quite easily. So I just keep the same few brushes aside for this reason, because it doesn't matter too much if the brush is a bit damaged for blending with solvent. I usually wait around half an hour for the solvent to dry. And you probably don't need to wait that long, but I like to make sure that the paper isn't wet at all before I go into the next layer because you can really damage the paper if it's still wet. This layer, I'm going to use the same process of choosing a color that stands out to me in the reference photo. So in this case, I saw that the black fur on the ear had to be a little bit darker. So I'm using some black to apply to that area. And then I'll look at my reference photo to see if there's anywhere else that I can use this black while I have it in my hand. And then I'll move on to the next most obvious color for me. In this layer, I'm starting to pay attention to the details a little bit more, and I'm making sure that my fur strokes are even more accurate. When you're drawing fur, you wanna make sure that your strokes are going in the right general direction, but you don't want them to all look exactly the same, like they're all lined up in a row like a picket fence. You need to overlap the strokes slightly or start and stop at different points, you want them to curve a little bit and you want some to be slightly longer or shorter than the others. You really don't want to have every stroke look exactly the same because it looks quite unnatural. Also pay attention to the changes in direction. For example, around the eyes and the ears, the fur changes direction quite a lot. So make sure that you're paying attention to your reference photo. 
Sometimes you see tutorials where the artist is completing one section at a time. For instance, they might start with the ear and then finish that area completely before moving on to the eye or the nose, and then slowly working their way across the artwork. For me, I find that that technique doesn't work well because it tends to look a little bit disjointed. For example, I can't remember the colours that I used on the ear, or in what order, or how much of each colour, so when I move on to the other ear, it doesn't really match very well. I also find it harder to get my values right. For instance, if I completed the ear first, I may think that my dark areas are dark enough, but if I do the nose next, I might realise that the ear needed to be darker now that I have another part of the artwork to compare it to. So I prefer to work in layers and build up my colour over the whole piece as I go. This way I can add a colour to multiple areas in each layer, which helps it look more cohesive. And I can also judge my shadows and my highlights based on other areas of the artwork as I'm going along. I'm using the Derwent Drawing Chinese White, and this is actually the most opaque white coloured pencil that I've found and I'm using it to create some more obvious fur texture over the entire dog. And then I'm actually going to glaze other colours over the top of these white strokes. And by glazing, I just mean that I'm going to lightly come through with my coloured pencils and tint the colour underneath, without covering up those white strokes completely. So I like using this method because I can use the one white pencil over the whole dog, without having to change my pencil every few seconds to match the colour on the reference photo. And then I can just come back over the top to adjust those colours afterwards. If you've used oil paints, acrylics or watercolour in the past, you may be familiar with the term glazing, and it's the same sort of theory here with coloured pencils. I'm then going to come through and lighten the highlights and darken the shadows to try and get the values or the contrast right. I believe that the two most important things to make your artwork look realistic are your proportions and your values. People tend to put so much focus on getting the perfect colour choice and adding heaps of tiny details to try and make their artwork look more realistic, but that's not what you need to be focused on. The colours that I'm using in this piece definitely don't match my reference photo exactly, and it really doesn't matter as long as your values are correct. A good way to check if your values are right is by taking a photo of your artwork and then turning it into black and white, and then getting your reference photo and turning that into black and white as well. And then you just compare them side by side, and because you've removed the colour aspect, you'll easily be able to see if your shadows are as dark as the reference photo, and if your highlights are as bright as they should be. To get those brighter highlights and darker shadows, I tend to switch to the Derwent Drawing Pencils again, which are those really opaque coloured pencils in comparison to other brands of pencils, and I also press a little bit harder if I need to. White fur can be super tricky to draw, especially on white paper, but I've created this tutorial in the top left corner to explain the process behind creating this white dog, including how to choose your colours. So click on that and I'll see you over there.